All right, so onto this problem. So the main thing, excuse me, the main thing we guys want to do is just look into factoring the numerator as well as the denominator. One thing I notice in my numerator is I can factor out an x, right? All these terms factor out to an x. And the other thing I notice is I really don't like dividing when my a, which the first term, is negative. So I'm going to factor out a negative as well. So in this first term, I'm going to factor out a negative x. That leaves me with a positive x squared plus x minus 1. And that's not correct. That's supposed to be a um, 2. Sorry about that. Did I not write that in there? Yeah, oops. All right. In my denominator, I don't really, again, I'm not going to want. Yes? Huh? Oh, yes, thank you. OK, we're going to factor this again. In my denominator, sorry, I wrote out the factored form for the answer and didn't put it back in there. Um, for my denominator, I'm going to want to rewrite this again without a negative in front. But I want to have this in standard form, right? You should always want the power to be first. But again, I'm going to factor out that negative. So I'm left with an x to the fourth minus 1. Does everybody see what I did? I kind of like swapped these. So it was negative x to the fourth plus 1. And then I factored out the negative. That's how I got to there. Okay. Now I can factor this a little bit further. Um, you guys can see here that I have x minus 1 times x minus 1. Here, you can see this is a difference of two squares, but it's kind of been raised up, which is really a x squared minus 1 times a x squared plus 1. And can I further factor this down? Because again, look at what I have. I have a difference of two squares again. So I have a negative x times x minus 1 times an x minus 1 all over a negative x minus 1 times x plus 1. Now, could I further factor this down? I could across imaginary numbers, right? I could do that as x plus i, x minus i. But again, when we're looking for our domain, when we're looking for these restrictions, we're, we're going to only be focused on real numbers. So there's really no other need to further this down. OK, so now I have everything in my factored form. At least what I need, because I mean you could factor this down, but that's not going to matter, which I'll explain in a second. Now we want to see what simplifies. Well, we have these x minus one divides out. Yes. Um, when you factor out the negative x, wouldn't the one be positive? Yeah, negative two and two x. That's supposed to be a positive. Yeah, thank you. Um, that was my original problem, right? Yeah. So, okay. So crap. So that's supposed to be a negative, and that was a positive, right? OK, there you go. So I still factor it, yeah. There you go. Sorry about that. But still, the factoring still makes sense. Now, these divide out, right? Because any term or number or expression divided by itself is equal to 1, correct? So my simplified final result is just going to be a negative x times x minus 1. No, again, guys, what's a negative divided by negative is just a positive, right? So I don't really need to worry about having the negatives there. And I'm just going to be left with a negative times x plus 1 times x squared plus 1. Now, the other thing is we got to go back and identify what were the values of x that could not be in my domain. And what we need to do is we need to go back and look at our original problem. Basically, what are the values that are going to, that cannot be in, um, that cannot be for x, that would make my denominator equal to 0. Well, what we could do is kind of like what we did for the domain earlier. Like if I set each factor equal to 0, x squared plus 1, hopefully you guys would see that that's going to give you plus or minus i, right? Does it make sense for us to say i can't be in the domain? No, because i is a complex number, right? So we're only talking about real numbers. That's why this doesn't affect our um, domain restrictions. However, can x equal negative 1? No. no. What about x equals 1? No. Well, remember our unit on functions. If I have a whole or if I have an asymptote, are, those still, are both those values not in my domain? Yes. Yes. So just because something, something gets simplified out 
doesn't mean it's not a restriction. What that means is just because you simplified out this x minus 1, that is still a restriction on your polynomial. So we would say x cannot equals 1 and x cannot equal negative 1. Because again, guys, go back, go back up to our original problem. If I plug in a 1 or a negative 1, does that make my denominator equal to 0? If you plug in a 1 or a negative 1, 1 to the fourth power is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. Negative 1 to the fourth power is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. So you have two restrictions. Even though the simplified result only is going to show one solution, or only, only shows you that one restriction. So all I'm trying to advise you guys is step one is a factor. But before you simplify it, identify, your domain, identify those restrictions. Then you can simplify it, and then just write the restrictions at the end. Okay, there's at least one example for you guys. Now you guys have four problems up there on the board to go ahead.